I guess my first question is, um, for a few of us uh, who may not know what Arduino is, could you give us a quick idea of what it is? And uh, what is the big idea behind Arduino? <laughs> well, so in its simplest form, Arduino is a small computer the size of a credit card. It's actually not as powerful as the computers that we use, like the laptop I'm using to make this uh, video call. But it's essentially the same type of computer that you will find in a microwave oven or in a TV or in, 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 in everyday objects. The idea is that that kind of electronics used to be complicated to program, so you needed to be an engineer in order to use it. So the work that we have tried to do in the last few years is to make this type of technology easy to use for everyday people. So I would say that the big idea is really that um, today's uh, world, it's pervaded, pervaded with, um, with technology. Everything we touch contains electronics. Uh, you know, even a food processor you buy at the supermarket contains a piece of electronic that drives it. So in a way, we want people to be able to uh, use this complex technology and we want everyday people to access this technology, even kids. Because if you can use this kind of technology, then you can really redesign the world around you. Because yeah. if you don't know how to use the technology, then it's hard to influence and impact on the world that surrounds you. So I think the big idea is to just make the technology simple so that more and more people can participate in the creation of this new world that's, that's uh, now every, that is today's world. Right. I, I have I have to tell you that it was really easy to uh, get get me started on on electronics because I have no no background on electronics, and it was really simple. Um. <laughs> I'm glad this is what we what we try to do. Then obviously you get uh, you know artists who make art pieces with Arduino. You get uh, scientists who use Arduino to measure data in a cheaper way than using complex and expensive. Uh, equipment. Uh, you have people in developing countries developing machines that they don't find easily and they would cost a lot of money for them. They redesign them. And also I think another big idea behind Arduino is that it's open source. So the design of the board and the software are all freely available. Some people can modify, can build upon our work, they can create kind of businesses that feed from Arduino. So I think that's also important as a way to spread the idea yeah. more than just the technology itself. Sure. And, and how did this uh, idea come about? Uh, were you interested in electronics right from when you were young or suddenly one day you decided you know, to <laughs> make this project work? Uh, I started to play with electronics when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was taking apart everything that people kind of brought to my house. So I took apart everything. I looked at the way it worked, so I wanted to learn, and I used a number of educational kits that people, the kids used to learn about technology. But then, you know, for many years, it hasn't been my job. I was doing mostly software. But then I started teaching to students in a design school, which, you know, have an arts background. So they don't do math, they don't do programming, they don't do electronics. So we needed to teach them in a short time. And the number of the tools that you find on the market were designed for teaching engineers who will go through a different path. Yeah. So my students are the type of people that if you don't engage them very quickly, they lose attention. They look at something else. So we needed to capture them and make them able to build stuff very quickly. Yeah. So that's how me and my friends, because it's a team of five people that yeah. came together to build this thing. So it was me, then me and David Quartieres, who's a professor in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And then we sort of got a couple of students involved. Uh, one of them is David, David Mellis. And then we involved another teacher. So we put together a team of five people that are able to kind of look at the different aspect of the project and kind of move it, move it forward. Then, you know, it started off as a tool for our students. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly other schools were picking it up, other yeah. people saw projects then with Arduino, they liked it, so they moved forward. And in the end, we got some amazing uh, response. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your, your community is very healthy, right? Uh, there are a lot of uh, very, very interesting projects that are uh, around internet. And uh, w what what is one thing that uh, 
one project maybe that uh, really surprised you or uh, something that, that that touched you personally well it's hard to just say one project there's many projects mm -hmm. if you think about it for example most of the 3D print, the open source 3D printers that you find on the market, they either have an Arduino board or something which is derived from an Arduino board inside. Okay. So clearly, that old 3D printing thing is just very interesting for us and it just goes very far. Uh, but then, you know, people have made machines that you can use to analyze DNA with, or they made quadcopters that, you know, small helicopters with four propellers that kind of fly almost by themselves. Yeah. So... There's some great, and also there are like more silly projects, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that maybe people build as a joke, uh, yeah. you know, uh, like for example, some people build this kind of uh, machine that mixes cocktails yeah. called yeah. the inebriator. Mm -hmm. So you put a glass and it moves around and it kind of fills the glass with yeah. different uh, liquors and it builds a, a cocktail. Yeah. So obviously you get a big range of different projects. Yeah. So it's hard to say. One project I liked more than the other <laughs> is it's hard. Yeah. Uh, and why was it uh, important that you made sure the op project was open source? Uh, well, I guess that me and, and the others sort of had different levels of experience with Linux. So we saw the benefit of being in an open source community. Right. And so we liked the idea that the software, also we based our work on a lot of open source software. So clearly we wanted to keep that cycle running and on the other hand we um we also wanted to experiment by making the hardware open and see what happens see yeah. what people do when they have this design that they can they can build upon yeah. so um, it was important in order to create an ecosystem around arduino which wasn't just based on the people who just are there because they make the money and they sign contracts yeah. but it's a wider ecosystem of people that give back by, you know, helping people on the forum. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> there's a number of amazing people yeah. that help other users on the forum and they give back mm -hmm. because it's an open source project. Yeah. If we lose that open source nature, then we become like a regular company. Yeah. And then it becomes, you know, it, it loses that spirit of collaboration yeah. and freedom and sort of helping each other that uh, we like. Sure. Okay. And uh, so I saw a video from Code Academy a few days back uh, saying how it uh, everybody should learn to program uh, because it lets you think in very creative ways. Uh, would you go one step ahead and say uh, everybody should learn to program Arduino electronics? Well, I would say that well, you can learn how to program with Arduino mm -hmm. because it's a computer anyway. And uh, actually, so I think in general... Um, you know, being part of the world that surround you mm -hmm. in every stage of the human yeah. sort of evolution, dependent on knowing a certain language. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a few years ago, if you knew English, you could move around the world and do things. Like now we're having a chat in English, but yeah. English is not my first language. I learned Italian first. So now I think programming is becoming the language that you need to be part of the 21st century. And there are several different programming languages that serve different purposes. I would say one step forward is what we're doing with Arduino is that we're programming physical objects. So we're programming devices that sit in your house and do things, devices that solve problems for people. Sure. So, um, so I think that's important. Programming is, Arduino is important also for that step that mm -hmm. you kind of start to act access a new type of device which is not your laptop, not your desktop nor your mobile phone, but it goes beyond. And also we notice that from an educational point of view the moment you do programming and you make something happen in real life so a light goes on or like a motor moves, then you have, uh, I believe some people get a deeper satisfaction out of that process yeah. because they made something happen in the world. Yeah. They didn't make some pixel on the screen change color. Yeah. They find that less I, important. I, but when they see something happening in real life, they're really captured by that. Yeah. I, I was really, uh, I could feel the difference between programming in a, in a laptop and making some light blink. Even though it was a very simple thing, <laughs> it got me really interested. Um, and now about a uh, uh, open source hardware. So we have, I, we we can say to a certain extent that we have successfully put uh, computers in some shape or form in every household. 
but uh, when i look around uh, most of them is uh, closed or uh, proprietary for some good uh, political reasons and for some good business reasons um but um open source hardware is something uh, still something uh, that is uh, special rather than a norm so what would you recommend to move uh, in the direction of uh, going towards open source uh, hardware well you know open source hardware is going to have the same problem that open source software has had in order to be accepted yes clearly there's a number of companies who make a lot of money by selling proprietary yes. software so obviously they have the resources to tell people open source software is bad it's not good it doesn't work on the other hand we have to admit that open source software for a long time it was kind of hard to use if you were not an expert so yeah. only recently uh, there are versions of linux that my mother could use yeah. you know? so it's a there's a dual mm -hmm. so at the same time so open source hardware on one hand, people say, well, you know, this Arduino stuff is not reliable, is not professional, professional. so obviously you have to fight against that attitude. Yeah. On the other hand, clearly people prefer to sell proprietary devices because they get more money. Yeah. And also, open source hardware, it's not really truly open source hardware because a lot of the components themselves are still proprietary. So, yeah. for example, the processor mm -hmm. on the board, it's still made by some company yeah. which has patents and protects the design so clearly there's there, there, there's no such thing as like purely open source hardware yeah. so so we we have that particular issue that it's going to be hard to solve um so i guess we need to go through a phase that's happening right now where a number of interesting startups are using technologies like arduino yeah. to build innovative products and instead of hiding the fact they're using Arduino, mm -hmm. they're starting to say, hey, I'm using Arduino here. This is open source hardware. You can look inside, you can see how it works, you can hack it, you can modify it, and all of that. Yeah. So that attitude mm -hmm. is going to start to introduce the concept to a wider audience that the devices that you buy can actually be looked inside, yeah. can be observed, can be understood, and maybe it can be redesigned and reused in different ways so yes. it's a question of creating this positive cycle of awareness in more and more people and the fact that open source hardware makes it easier for people to learn how to do hardware design mm -hmm. because they looked at an existing design they modify it and they learn uh, by looking at those circuits you know when i was a kid i learned a lot by looking at this electronics magazine and look at how people design circuits mm -hmm. and i understood how you solve a certain amount of problems by doing uh, certain things with components yeah. so i think open source hardware it's good also for that because it introduces people into this world of electronics which is considered to be complicated yeah. but it, nowadays it's less complicated than in the past okay. Uh, so let's move on to some um, fun questions on some personal side. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite books? What or what do you do in your free time? <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment I don't have a lot of free time because I'm working a lot on Arduino. But I, try, I, you know, one thing is that I always like to travel. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's one of the things I like is to travel and to go to different places and meet people. Yeah. So in a way, Arduino has given me a way to do that as a job. Yeah. So whenever I travel somewhere, there's always an excuse to go meet people that use Arduino to do interesting things with Arduino. So when you know, I travel yeah. and I go see different pla places and I meet people, and during that. I get to hang out with yeah. people who use Arduino, yeah. and I discover interesting things because yeah. each country, each yeah. culture is absorbing Arduino in a different way, yeah. and it's producing different results. So it's really interesting to go and look at the, what people do, yeah. and maybe being able to say, "Look, these people in India are doing interesting things that you people in the U.S. should know about." Yeah. So it's yeah. about this creating yeah. these connections between different uh, cultures, and I, I, I totally like that. Nice. Then I have a personal. Uh -huh. I like cinema, so I watch a lot of movies. But ah, that's okay. my, when I have the time, I do that. Right. Yeah, you 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 clearly do a lot of things every day. Uh, you give talks around the world, uh, consult yeah. for a lot of companies, uh, lead the Arduino project. So, what are some of the 
productivity hacks, if I can call it that way, that you follow? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that uh, it's happening is that Arduino is obviously a distributed uh, company, let's call it like this. So we have an office of people that collaborate with us in Italy, one in Sweden, one in India just opened, and we are looking at setting up also in the US. So we have people working with us in different parts of the world. So in a way, we organize ourselves as a completely sort of uh, digital organization. So we use a lot of uh, Google Docs instead of like regular Docs. And we use chat a lot. We use the Google Hangout a lot to talk to each other, to do conferences and to have meetings. Um, we, um, we use this thing called Uber Conference, which is like a... It's like a voice conferencing thing, yeah. but, you know, uh, it's like an audio conferencing for making conference calls, mm -hmm. but it's like the 21st century version of it. So it's got a web interface yeah. and you can schedule the call. So this is useful when you want to have a meeting with people and yeah. they're all moving around around across the world so they can call. Yeah. So we, 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 we use a lot of these digital mm -hmm. digital products to, to, to actually make our life uh, simple. So everything that we do is sort of happening online somewhere otherwise yeah. it would be impossible to have people working on a project where you have maybe the people who are writing the documentation are in the US uh, some people are doing the software in Italy some other are in Sweden and then the Indians are like doing they're testing the product and uh, helping people you know figure out how to make it work yeah. so it needs to be like a digital company yes. uh, I guess I'm down to the last question what is one idea that uh, you would like us to think about or one idea that you can share <clears throat> well, I don't know. I think the so the main thing I want I want uh, I would like people to sort of always keep in mind is the fact that again the world that surrounds us is made of these digital technologies. So if we don't know how to not only how to use the technology but how to create with the technology, we cannot participate in the creation of the world that surrounds us. And then so we start to become people that just buy products and plug them in and, and use them. Okay. But then already there are devices that you you buy an iPad mm -hmm. and it says, oh, you can get music. You have to buy it from the store. and Or you can get movies, but you have to buy it. So everything that you do, mm -hmm. it's kind of driven and curated by somebody else. Okay. So it's important that we teach kids that technology is not only something that you buy, you plug in and you play with, but it's something that you can build, that you can modify, that if you don't like it, you create your own version of the things that surround you. And if you don't create this awareness, then you will end up with generations of people that are, in a way, dependent on the people who create technology and tell them this is how the world works. Mm -hmm. Buy the device, okay. buy the subscription, and forget about the rest. No? So it's important that we teach kids to start with that technology is something that it's not complicated. It was made by another human being like you, and you can modify, create, do whatever you want with it. Th thank you so much for the interview, Massimo. Um, You're welcome.